Hi guys, we'll go back to Super Math for you. This is Mr. Rego. This is the second part of the PERT test review, getting into college algebra. If you haven't seen the first part, make sure to click on that, suggest the video and watch that first. That's the first part, all the way to 3F. Very interesting part, and then come back to this one. Right, we're gonna do it till question 6B today. The idea for 4A is the following. They give you a function, and they ask you f of negative 2. <clears throat> what does that mean? Instead of the x, you're going to write a negative 2. So I'm going to write the remaining function, which is 4x. Instead of the x, I'm going to put a negative 2 to the second power. Minus x. Instead of the x, I put a minus 2. If you notice, I put a parenthesis. Always do that so you avoid mistakes. Now I'm going to follow the order operation. Parenthesis, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. This is the most common mistakes that we do on this type of test. Parenthesis, nothing to solve inside the parenthesis. Keep going. E exponents, I have an exponent. So I'll write everything else the same. Negative 2 to the second power is negative 2 times negative 2, which gives you 4. Uh, let me write everything the same. I just want to make sure that you understand PEMDAS. Next is multiplication or division. I have multiplication. 4 times 4 is 16. Negative negative gives you positive and plus 3. And the last step is adding all this. 16 and 2 is 18 plus 3 is 21. Therefore, my answer is B. Same idea with B. The whole idea here is the following. Instead of giving you a value for x, they're saying f of x is 49. It's negative 49. So you see, they didn't replace the value inside. They gave you the whole thing. So instead of giving you the x value like they did here, f of x is y. So you have to replace f of x. So I'm going to write, instead of f of x, I'm going to write negative 49 equal the remaining. So I have negative 2x cubed. I'm hoping you understood that little step because that's a whole difference. Okay, uh, and now I gotta solve for x. Leave the x by itself, minus five, minus five, that's gonna give me negative 54, equal negative two x cubed, and this is a horrible two. Then I have to divide by negative two on both sides. Neg negative is positive, 54 divided by two is 27, and the two is gonna cancel and I have x cube. I have to leave this by itself, so I have to do cube root of this. Cube root. Cube root. Okay, so my cube root will cancel that cube, and I have the x remain on this side, and cube root of 27 is 3. 3 times 3 times 3 gives you 27. All right, that's why I got a 3. So my answer is b as well. So let's go for c. For c we have f of x equals this function. Now what's going on? They're saying a plus 1. Instead of only a value, they're giving you a plus 1. But the process is the same. Whatever you see in x, you replace your negative 2. Whatever you see in x, you replace that by a plus 1. So my f of x is the same as 3x squared minus 2x. So I'll do f of a plus 1. Whatever I see in x, put a parenthesis, a plus 1 to the second power, minus 2, a plus 1. Instead of the x, a plus 1. After this, it's just regular math. Pen this again. I have an exponent outside here, so I got to do a plus 1. So let's do this on the side. So I have a plus 1 to the second power is the same as a plus 1 times a plus 1. FOIL, a times a is going to give me a squared plus a plus a plus 1. Combine like terms, you're going to get a plus a is 2a plus 1. So instead of this, I have 3 parentheses a squared 
2a plus 1 minus 2 times a plus 1. Now the distribute. 3 times a squared is 3a squared. 3 times 2, 6a. 3 times 1 is 3. Same idea with the negative 2. Negative 2 times a is negative 2a. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. And at this point, I just need to combine like terms. a squared, nothing else. a with a, so 6 minus 2 is 4, positive 4a. In my constants, 3 minus 2 is going to give me positive 1. So 3a squared plus 4a plus that, my answer is b. All right, let's go next. Now for 5a, they're going to give me a fraction with the radical denominator, okay? We can, we're not allowed to have any radicals on the denominator. We have to do something that is called rationalize, meaning I have to get rid of that square root. So how? By multiplying by the same radical on the bottom and the top. Simple as that. How come? And let me show you the bottom. When you multiply two radicals, you keep the radical and you multiply the same number on the inside. I'm sorry, the numbers. 5 times 5. It's 25. I'm going to finish the denominator. The square root of 25 is 5. So the idea of multiplying times a radical is to get rid of that square root. And at the end, you don't have a radical. And that's what we need. On the top, these numbers on the outside, these numbers on the inside, you cannot multiply. So they stay the same. Why? Because the 3 is on the outside and the 5 is on the inside. You cannot multiply those two. Therefore, I have 3 square root of 5 over 5, and my answer is A. Next, 5B. Same idea. I have a square root on the denominator, which I'm not allowed to. Same as 5A. But the difference is that here, there's only a square root or a radical. Here, there's a 2 next to it. So there's only one trick, which is I got to multiply. Same idea, same square root and the 2. But instead of a plus, I'm going to put a minus. And that's called the conjugate. So, same square root of x, but instead of a plus, minus 2. And now remember, I'm multiplying those two times those two. But now, whatever I do in the denominator, I have to do on the numerator. Okay? But my concern is the denominator. So let's do it. Because I have 2 and 2, then I got to do FOIL. First term times first term is going to give me, look at this, square root times square root. How many of those do you have? Two. So that to the second power. Square root of 2 times negative 2 gives me negative 2 square root of x. And now I'm done with the first part. Now I got to do the same thing with the 2. 2 times square root of 2, I'm sorry, 2 times square root of x gives me positive 2 square root of x. 2 times negative 2 gives me negative 4. Okay, and this is the denominator. That's all what I'm doing right now. If you notice, when I do the conjugate, look at the middle term. They're the same thing, opposite sign. So 2 minus 2, they cancel out. That's the whole idea about doing the conjugate. Now, one more thing. When I multiply square root of x times square root of x, I have two of those. But this radical has a little 2 as the index, so square with the radical cancel each other. I have two of this, and I have the square root, so those two will cancel, and my answer is x. So here I have an x, and on the bottom, what's left? Minus 4. So I recommend to do all the math on the side, and then come back to the problem. Now I just need to distribute this. a times that, remember, the a doesn't multiply the x, the a stays on the outside, which is a the square root of x. And now I have a times negative 2, which is going to give you negative 16. Uh, what else can you do here? Nothing else you can simplify. We check the answers and we see that the answer is C. Excellent. Let's go with 6A. Say, write it in an equation in standard form that crosses two points. If you notice, I have three equations here, two, three formulas. The first one is standard form. This is what the, they're asking me. 8X plus BY equals C. A, B, and C are any whole numbers. A has to be positive. If you notice, x and y are in the same side. Well, this one is not on the same side, so right, right away, that's not an answer. 
X and Y, X and Y on the same side, X and Y on the same side. That's what the standard form means. Okay? Now, can I go with this information straight to standard form? No. I have to go either to star. This is the point slope form. And I hope you identify the last one. This is the slope intercept form. Okay? Out of these two, to star is easier to use the point slope form. Okay? So the main idea is that I need to find the slope. After that, I plug in one point and I'm done. In the slope intercept form, you have to find the slope and then find the y-intercept. All right? So as we can see, the main thing that we need to do is to find the slope, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, having two points, what I need to do is label them x y x y either one could be first so let's call this the first point and let's call this the second point all right let's replace so let's go slope equals y2 minus y1 y2 is 9 minus from the formula y1 but y1 is also negative so you got to be careful and put a parenthesis right there over x2 minus x1 x2 is negative 4 negative 2 i'm sorry minus 4 Okay, two negatives gives you a positive on the top, and the bottom negative two minus four is negative six. Nine and three is twelve divided by negative six. My slope is negative two. Once I have that, I go straight to the point slope formula, which is y minus y one. I can use the first point or the second point. Let's use the first point. So y minus y one. Y one is negative 3 so I gotta put negative 3 equals m slope is negative 2 that multiplies x minus x1 x minus x1 alright and that's this point slope formula alright now you notice x and y has to be in the same size so there's no two signs there's no parentheses so let's solve all this two negatives gives me a positive Distribute negative 2 times x is negative 2x, negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. Now I want the x and the y on the same side, and these numbers cancels in the other side. So let's get rid of this 3. Okay, and right there I'll get y equals negative 2x, 8 minus 3, positive 5. If you notice, how do you call this form? That's right slope intercept form right now let's do the last step last step is i gotta send this x to the left side so plus 2x plus 2x and in my standard form i have to write the x first and then the y so the x goes first which is 2x and then here comes the y in my right side the x is cancelled and that's equal to 5 all right do we have that c is my answer okay Let's go to 6b now. 6b is asking a linear equation in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, that is perpendicular to this equation. So it's 3x minus 4. All right, so the equation that is given is 3x minus 4. But the one that I need to find is perpendicular to this line. And my line crosses through this point, 3 comma 6. So let's, let's talk about a couple of things. I need to write it in slope intercept form. My line has to be perpendicular to this. Okay, so let's call this y1, line 1. Now, in order for me to have two lines that are perpendicular, the slopes have to be negative reciprocal. Let's go straight to the, this line. The slope of this line is 3. Remember, mx plus b. If the y is by itself, any number that is with the x is the slope. So slope 1 is 3. Okay, negative reciprocal means flip this so my second slope is flip this but this is 3 over 1 flip it 1 over 3 and if 1 is positive the other one has to be negative that's what negative reciprocal means okay if slope 1 was negative then my slope 2 should be positive okay how do we verify if I'm right or wrong this is another way how to double check when two lines are perpendicular, you multiply the slopes and you should get negative 1. 
Let's do that. My slope of 1 is 3 over 1 times negative 1 over 3. Multiply fractions top with top. That gives me negative 3. Bottom with bottom. That gives you 3. Negative 3 divided by negative 3. I'm sorry, but 3 is negative 1 which is what we have. So my slope is correct. I suggest for you always to double check, okay? Make sure you double check this. So now I have my slope, all right, for my line. Excellent, negative one over three. What else did they give me? They said that my line crosses three comma six. So they give me a point, which is three comma six. So now what am I missing? I'm missing the y-intercept. Okay, I'm missing the y-intercept because in my, if my, my line, they're asking me, slope intercept form. I already have y equals negative 1 over 3 of x, but I don't know how much is b, so I have to find b. To find b, I'm going to use this equation again. y equals mx plus b. I have the slope. I replace it in here. And this point that they gave me, the first value is x, the second value is y. So I'm going to replace my slope, the x value, and the y value in here. y is 6. My slope, negative 1 over 3. x is times 3 plus b. If you notice, the only thing that I, that's missing is the b, the y-intercept. Let's keep going. So 6, let's write it here underneath. Negative one third times three. Let's make this a fraction. Top with top gives me negative three. Bottom with bottom gives you three plus b. Negative three divided by three gives you negative one plus b. Okay, let's keep working over here. So I have six equals negative one plus b. Let's leave the b by itself. Plus one plus one, and now six plus one is seven. The negative ones cancel, and my y-intercept is 7. I have the slope. I have the y-intercept. Plug it back in. y equals mx plus b. m is negative one-third of x, and the y-intercept, we ended up with 7. So this is my final answer. Negative one-third of x plus 7, and here we go. Okay? Remember... If we had to guess on this answer in the beginning, write a linear equation in slope intercept form, we could have done it. I didn't notice these answers. Look at this. The only equation that is in slope intercept form is A. B, this is not slope intercept form because you have Y and X on the same side. It's not even standard. So this is not an answer. X and Y, this is the standard form. It's not in slope intercept form. X equals, no. Slope intercept form is Y equals. Okay, guys, so we're done with this section. I'll be doing some extra practice in general and for specific topics. For the PERT, I'm going to keep going on the PERT, the SAT, and the ACT. So make sure to stay, stay tuned. All right, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bells. If you learn something here, like the video. It doesn't hurt you, but it helps me a lot because other people will be able to see this video as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.